first time since last summer. The latest survey by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors points to a slowing of the market across the region. In many places, the number of homes for sale has risen sharply, but buyers are in short supply. This time last year, there was a shortage of homes for sale. Now, after the abolition of home information packs in May, many more would-be sellers have been tempted back to test the market. And the laws of supply and demand are starting to put a downward pressure on prices. At this estate agency in Bury St Edmunds, they say sales are still happening, but there's one key message. Be realistic with your pricing, that's the key. If you're a seller, just be realistic, listen to what the market's telling you, and look at other properties that are for sale. If you overvalue and overprice your property, you will sit there and have to reduce it and reduce it, which is not a positive move. If you go to market realistically, you will find a buyer. In every county in the region, there's a new mood of caution. Hardly surprising, with swinging public spending cuts and many job losses likely to be on the horizon. And the old days of 95% mortgages for first-time buyers are long gone. A typical deposit required now by the banks around £35,000. When Rebecca Shelton bought her home in the town two years ago, it was with a deposit of around £12,000. I think I sort of bought it at the wrong time, really. It was just before the recession started, so it's kind of not, not particularly a good time. But um, I'm glad, I'm still glad I own it, because it'll be impossible to buy one now. At the market's peak, buying property was seen as a way to get rich quick. No more, perhaps, but wise heads say it still represents a sound long-term investment. Kim Riley, BBC Look East, Bury St Edmunds. Network Rail has agreed to build a new rail link which could take more than 2,000 lorries off the A14 every day. It hopes the government will pay for the track, which will cost £41 million and be built near Hadley Road in Ipswich. Freight from Felixstowe would not have to travel through London to reach the Midlands. Work should be completed by 2014. British Airways will use Stansted Airport as a base for three new super jumbo cargo jets. They're expected to start using the airport next year. Stansted was given permission to take bigger aircraft last month. Now, who do you think should pay for a free air show? Should the people who watch it from the beach in Lowestoft put the full cost of the show into the donations bucket? Should businesses on the seafront help with the cost? Or is it up to the charity involved to find money from big business? One thing is clear. Every year, it's a struggle to raise the cash. In two days, the Red Arrows will be flying over Lowestoft for the annual air show, which attracts over 400,000 people, generating around £13 million to the local economy. But organisers say they want more financial help from seafront businesses, because staging the events will increase from £300,000, which they can't afford. We sent out 25 letters to the seafront traders to ask for their support because of all the budgetary cuts. We know we're going to be facing extra costs next year and in particular uh, cost for emergency services provisions. But some traders say they haven't got the cash. We need more from local authorities to enhance this seafront more than just two days of an air show. Therefore, if we'd done more trade throughout the year, we would have more finances to support an air show. Others disagree. I've supported the air show for 14 years or however long and I believe all the other traders should do. Even if they just put 20, 30 pound in each, all along the seafront. The council say tourists are coming to the seafront area. This is the general magnet in the area that they will generally come during the holiday with 60% of visitors in the area actually coming to outside the East Point Pavilion around the fountain area. So this is very much the hot spot area of the seafront. This year, the lowest of air show celebrates its 14th birthday but organisers say if seafront traders don't give more financial backing, it could be their last. Dawn Gerber, BBC Look East, Southwold. The so-called lotto lout Michael Carroll has sold his luxury home in Norfolk for a reported £142,000. This is what it looked like when we visited earlier this year. In football, the Stevenage manager Graham Wesley said he was proud of his team after their first ever tie in the Carling Cup ended with a 2-1 defeat to Portsmouth last night. Stevenage levelled the scores at 1-1 through Darren Murphy, thanks to a big deflection, but Portsmouth went on to win the match. These Still are the games... Still getting deals done, um, trying to get deals agreed with clubs, deals agreed with players, the agents. Um, it's not easy. I'm still hopeful one or two might be in for obviously Saturday, but we'll have to wait and see. I have to say today's what, Monday. Uh, 
we just take it a day at a time and um, we're trying. The club aren't trying, I have to say. We, we know enough about them and uh, it's a tough game. They'll come to Norwich and like last year, the expectancy level's not on them and nice stadium and the pitch is in great condition, big crowd. So um, we know what we're up against and if, if we play the way we can, hopefully we'll go through. Well, those were the two managers talking about the games tonight. That was the Stevenage thing. If I can tell you, the games tonight are Ipswich. Uh, they both go to Exeter. Norwich are at home to Gillingham. Colchester go to Hereford. And Southend play Bristol City. You're watching Lookies from the BBC. Coming up, flying high despite the downturn. Now, if you drive, the chances are you have hit and killed a wild animal. Often, there's nothing you can do about it. The job of clearing them up usually falls to the local council. Now, you might think nature could take its course, but today, one council in the region has defended itself for deciding to cremate roadkill at a cost of £1,500 a month. Over the last three months, Kings Lynn and West Norfolk Borough Council say they've spent £4,000 on collecting and cremating animals found dead on their roads and beaches. This weekend, for example, on the Saturday, I uh, went to, to South Creek to collect a deer that had been knocked down on the road and, and had fallen into a, a children's play area. At West Rudham, the pet's crematorium has the contract to deal with the carcasses. The contract is worth an estimated £18,000 a year. Well, I think if we employed just one person, it would cost far in excess of what we're paying for a service, let alone the costs of having a, um, a pet cremator that would be working, all, an animal cremator that would be working all the time. Meanwhile, the council claims this would be more expensive if they kept the work in-house. The Borough Council is responsible for over 500 square miles and many hundreds of miles of rural roads and a large coastline. And in a three-month period, 23 deer, two seals and a porpoise have been collected and incinerated. But while other rural councils we spoke to in Cambridgeshire, Suffolk and Essex send their roadkill to landfill, cremation is the chosen method for disposal in West Norfolk because they claim it's more humane. The, the amount of roads we've got and traffic on them, really, when you think about it, that's not really a lot. Well, I suppose they should do it the cheapest way. They can, really. Whatever they can do cheaper, then that's probably better. Despite the criticism, Kings Lynn and West Norfolk Borough Council will continue contracting the workout on hygiene and cost grounds. Kate Riley, BBC Look East, Kings Lynn. Now, for most of us, flying anything other than economy is just a dream, or if you're very lucky, an occasional treat. But imagine the luxury of having the whole plane to yourselves. Ah, but of course, VIP travel comes with a VIP price tag. But despite the economic downturn, the rich and the famous still have money to spare, which is very good news for one company in the region. Okay, lovely. Have a nice holiday. Bye. See you later. The best bit about any holiday is the holiday itself. And not so great is the getting there. So just imagine the joy of cutting out the queues and going it VIP all the way. If you are what you say you are, a superstar. Saxon Air have catered for everyone, from pop stars to heads of state. Now the company is expanding its modest premises at Norwich Airport with a brand new £6 million flight facility. Plenty of space to hold its growing fleet of jets and helicopters, and a VIP lounge worthy of any head of state. Is it just about the rich and famous? Are they the only ones who can use this service? Not at all, not at all. Uh, local business people, um, uh, Anybody who finds that time is the issue instead of looking at necessarily always the cost, for whatever reason, uh, it just makes sense to fly uh, privately. The cheapest deal will set you back three and a half grand. That'll get you a private jet for a day trip as far as the south of France. But frivolity aside, there are genuine economic benefits to having such a facility here. It's a significant investment in the local economy. We, we 
mustn't underestimate that. I mean, six million pounds is not small potato. It's that big signal. We're open for business. It's a place where if you land and you're a very important person, um, it gives you a good experience of Norwich and Norfolk. So and that first impression is very important. Critics would of course point out that in a period of relative austerity, such a service is uncalled for, especially in an era where we should all be reducing our carbon footprint. The bottom line is though, there's a demand, although it won't be coming from me. Sir, sir, would you like to come and check in? Clive Lewis, BBC Look East, unfortunately still at Norwich Airport. <laughs> but cool yeah. in the shade. Too. Ever hopeful, yes. <laughs> Trying to get away from the rain, yeah, I think I he was. Right sort of There's weather nothing for I can say. No, no, I'll, I'll try and make the weather work for you, Clive, don't worry. Um, it looks as though it's rain on the agenda at the moment. We've had one front that moved right across the region last night with some heavy bursts of rain around dawn this morning, and it left part of the front behind to bring a second go at the rain during this afternoon and this evening. Now, on the radar, you can see last night's rain moving away quite early on, and then this other band of rain developed and produced some quite heavy bursts of rain. It's just sinking away southwards now and during the next two or three hours or so it should eventually clear away from even the southeastern corner of the region and as you can see clearing skies coming into the northwest of the region means that we'll have a starry night certainly by about midnight onwards for most places. It will then be a dry night and a dry start to tomorrow. Temperatures under the clear skies down to 11 or 12 Celsius. Good night for looking for shooting stars. We're still approaching the peak of the Persage meteor shower on Thursday. As for tomorrow's chart, we're not quite near enough to the low to get all the very heavy rain. We could just catch a shower or two. And I'm afraid standing in front of a high, which we had hoped would arrive uh, earlier on in the uh, week, but it looks as though it's going to be held away to the west. So a lovely sunny morning for us. Patchy cloud developing during the course of the morning just the outside chance of a shower this in the afternoon tomorrow particularly across the fens and into north norfolk but most of the region should stay dry and with a light westerly breeze as well temperatures feeling pretty reasonable at 21 degrees celsius for many places 21 celsius is 70 degrees fahrenheit now the outlook is a little bit more unsettled because this area of low pressure over the north sea starts to drift very slowly southwards and as it does so it still affects the eastern side of the country with what's left of its weather fronts and bringing some quite heavy showers and some of those showers over eastern scotland today for example have been thundery and the high you'll notice still well away to the west so we really have got a long while to wait before that arrives to bring us fine weather so this is not particularly good news for the eastern side of the country and certainly for our region although we have a fine day on wednesday dry with sunny spells for most places 22 degrees celsius in the south of the region by thursday when the when the low comes down the north sea it looks like a rather cloudy day with some prolonged rain for a time turning showery later on but they could become thundery and then friday and saturday a mixture of sunny intervals and scattered showers those might even be thundery as well. Sunday, with a bit of luck, we might be able to get the high somewhat closer and drier, brighter weather. The winds from the north means the nighttime temperature is a little bit lower, down to 11 or 12 Celsius. So when the farmers wanted rain, it was dry. Now they want it dry, it's raining. Yeah, we're Good. just awkward, aren't okay. we? And that's got worse since lunchtime as well. <laughs> that's all from us. Good night. Goodbye.